welcome to another episode of the car girl show with janice Hi. and jesse we're there. bringing you news that you can use and today we're going to be talking about hiring and staff it's mm -hmm. Kind of that time of year, I feel like. Oh my for goodness! For some reason, everyone's hiring. It never ends. Okay, <laughs> you know, it's a turnstile. We're always hiring people. I'd love it if everyone stayed at the dealership for a long time, and absorbed the training. But they don't. They so, don't. Sometimes it's a it's a transient job. We have people come, and hopefully, we're promoting uh, people, and that's something that we're going to talk about. We'll talk about like hiring. what? Yeah, what should you be looking for? Maybe that you're you're not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. some tips um, on on hiring, what to say, you know, during interviews and what not to say, things like that. But Janice and I were kind of choking about. Yeah, we're having a little bit of fun talking about. about I mean, uh, we've been to so many dealerships and yeah. it seems like there's always kind of the token person. <laughs> yeah, for, the old guy. <laughs> there's always the old guy. There's never an old woman. He's retired. <laughs> He uh, yeah, he he's likes there. to read the newspaper. He's there. Did I tell you about the guy <laughs> in the city? I went in, 82 years old, no word of a lie, 82, still taking ups. I said, what happened to your repeat and referral customer? Did he tell 82 me? years old, he's still standing on the point taking customers. What that guy, did you <laughs> tell me the guy he had a customer, he went to go get him a coffee, he didn't come back because he forgot they were in the showroom? Yeah. And then they, came, they were looking at him like, is he coming back? True Where does story. he keep going? Yeah, we had to remind him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there's Stanley, your customers are still here. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not time to go home. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, how do we get away with it? If we want better, if we want more, you know, we, we got to start looking in different directions and attracting different types of people, different industries so and in different ways. So we had a, a couple of ways. tips for you car dealers about hiring staff this spring. We know you need people. Uh, what can you do? So tip number one. Tip number one is, I mean, you look I'm internally. We yeah, talked about this. We talked about looking internally mm -hmm. and not to, you know, disregard the, the women or the young guy or whoever, like anyone is fair game. And if, if they're hungry or if you see a spark of something in them, it can be developed. I mean, I started as a receptionist, right? And I was in school and never, ever did it cross my mind that car. car sales was something that I could actually do, yeah. right? I just was like, I don't know enough about cars. I'm not salesy. I, you know, all of these things of I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. But I actually remember the owner of that dealership when I was interviewing for a receptionist position, he had this little toy car on his desk and he's just kind of eyeing me and goes, you know what? I see something in you. He goes sell me this car and he like pushes over <laughs> this toy sell car. Me the car sell me the sell pen. me this <laughs> and not everybody works great under under pressure but so look internally let's look at your receptionist let's look at and i think dealers could start younger let's put it on on somebody's radar what's wrong with a, a salesperson who's young people you know they have a stamina longevity <laughs> I mean, there's lots of stuff going for them, but less obligations. You know, let's <laughs> let's look at. Um, I mean, could we look at your high school? Could we start like a junior sales um, consultants program? I just think like we should apprentice. start earlier, earlier, and like an apprentice technician. Let's have. Sure. Could we have an apprentice salesperson? salesperson I yeah. think we could put it on people's Ooh. radar. Um, like you said, I think a this, lot of young people, it's not even on their radar. It doesn't even occur to them that retail automotive sales is something that that they could that do they could do yeah so start early look internally absolutely yeah um and yeah. then the second point um we we're talking about social use social right and using, you're gonna hear that from us a lot using <laughs> social Jesse. media using yeah. your networks your you know your employees networks to kind of to to introduce the idea that yeah, you're hiring look, that you're hiring for men and for women and they don't necessarily have to have a sales background, background. right? Yep. I mean, I think yep. number one thing is you someone that, who's in customer service, someone who's good with people. Yes. Sales can be developed. Yep. We that, have a ton of sales training. That reminds me, I remember, um, I think servers make excellent salespeople. I remember a great uh, sales girl who came up from, um, she was a surfer at one of the, uh, at one of the pubs right. that the staff used to visit and they talked her into coming to sell cars and, and she worked out amazing, right? amazing. But speaking of social, Jesse, we were talking about the dealership 
putting on an event, a hiring event, maybe right. pooling some resources with a uh, service, service and sales, getting along, there's a new concept. <laughs> so um, let's pool our pool resources and have a night, an information night right. about working in automotive retail right. and inviting- How to be successful in the automotive industry and what it takes, right? Tell them what it's gonna take. I mean, it's not by no means, hey, come on and we're gonna, you know, you're gonna, everyone's gonna be earning $100,000 plus, you know, you definitely can. Yeah, certainly you possible. Know? Certainly it's possible, but there's work to be done to, to get there. So you wanna be upfront and say, listen, these are the steps we're willing, we're gonna provide you this, but you wanna make sure you're upfront and that you're providing all that information so, so that you aren't having people. So here about having an event, an event maybe you promote on social about working in automotive yeah. retail. Uh, we've seen this uh, tactic um, put out by vendors. We'll do it for dealerships. I certainly do it for a dealership all yeah, day I'm long. Doing, I'm doing it um, next week. Yes, for, I know for you're doing one. I'd be happy to partner with you. Yeah. Um, but it's something a dealership can easily do on their own. Put it on an event, invite people into your right. showroom, invite people into your store to see what yeah. you do. Uh, and, and be upfront. I love what you said about being yeah. upfront about, about wages and expectations. I think oh, we set the expectation up. Yeah, and right? we're talking about that, and that's something I'm going to be talking about on Thursday when I do this event with this uh, in partnership with a dealership, um, talking about social media, talking about sales, and you know what it takes to actually be a high-performing, high-producing salesperson in a car dealership. So, um, the other thing we we talked about is you know uh, getting people to do the things you want them up to front do. that and you want you them, to them to do as a qualification, right? Yep. So if you're gonna expect your on staff phone, to be, video. be getting on the phone mm -hmm. and be you know be shooting video yep. and promoting the dealership then these are the things you need to tell them up front and not just tell them but let them show you yeah. right let's so, have a role play that's something that i do when hiring bdc staff there should be way more role playing in the initial and i know you say some people are not good under pressure and whatnot but it'll give you some sort of idea Can they one think on their feet are they willing to do it too can they can they think on on their feet? Things can be developed after that, but the initial spark, you know. Sure, and this will you, eliminate you the know. breakfast club syndrome. If anybody doesn't know what the breakfast club syndrome is, we named that after uh, the guy who started. You know, he came on board. It was at a Chrysler store to sell cars, and uh, ten o'clock came. He said, "I'm I'm going out for breakfast," and he never returned. So we call that the breakfast club. You know what? Turnover is hard on the dealership. It's hard on resources. It's yeah. hard on customers. You just yeah. you would just buy a car off somebody and now, and they're, now gone. they're gone. So yeah. you know, let's hire better. During for, so during the interview, you got to be qualifying by doing some role role playing, um, and maybe even before they get to the interview, ask them for the video submission. Um, mm -hmm. And I know, like just the idea of volume. I like people to choose from. Yeah. So let's, I love the events and getting a group of people. I like looking internally for talent that may already be there. And, and something else, which I think this is another show entirely, but dealers, I think we really need to start looking at different options where we offer more flexibility in the workplace, especially for women you know, yeah. where we're not giving them a hard time, they have to take their kid to the doctor. And that can go for a father or a mother. Um, but flexibility, um, job sharing, maybe some work from home options. When I, I look at, look, we kinda, you're gonna we roll your eyes, just like a car dealer, this. just like a car dealer. But I think you can, okay? If you have a good CRM, what what's wrong with logging in on a Wednesday morning and I get to work from home Wednesday morning. Because they're on commission. Customers. They're on commission and they got to be at the dealership physically to take ups and not lose opportunity. Not even just the ups that a customer might be coming in, you know, uh, for a service appointment. And like there's opportunities there that if you're not physically there. So that's there, time I can be at home and I can laser focus on prospecting, on creating appointments if, that I'm going to come in okay, and Okay, so you do that on your time on. off. That's what the hustle is. That That's what you, you know, it's whoever is, wants to really excel and you're hungry, you're gonna do that on your time well, off. You know We're what, here Jessica, on a Sunday. May, we'll agree to disagree on that because I think the new workers, the Generation Z, uh, they're going to demand something different, and I think we're going to see we're going to see some changes in the workplace. And I, I think the dealer who open is wide open to new ideas about that uh, will be the one uh, ahead of the curve.
Yeah. Um, so we'll leave it there. Let us know what you think. Yeah. Let us know. What team do you think Dennis or Team Jesse? What, <laughs> what are what, dealers? What are sales managers? What are some of your challenges? Service managers as well. Mm. What are some of your challenges? Hiring staff, keeping staff, um, interviewing. Uh, where can where can we help you go on this? Because we know that it's a challenge to yeah. uh, to keep the, the dealership staffed. We understand. Yeah, absolutely. So mm. that concludes our episode today. Yeah, Show some love thanks. in the comments. Let us know your feedback. And uh, we'll catch you on the next episode <laughs> of the Car Girl Show with Yay. Janice and Jesse. Thanks, Take care. guys. That's it. It's a wrap.